Well, this is awkward. Greetings fellow interloper, Taylor here. Welcome to part two of the Did You Know series. I honestly had no idea the first would go over so well, but suffice it to say I knew I had to find a few more things to keep you guys on your toes. It is a challenge to try to surprise you guys, I'll be honest, but I love the diversity this community has as far as game knowledge goes. So keep in mind, while some of these might seem really simple to you, for another traveler, it can be eye-opening. So I'll do my best to make a list going from simple to progressively harder, and hopefully there's something for everyone. After number one, stick around to see how you grade it out and let me know in the comments below. If nearly everybody knew all five, then it's great feedback for me moving forward when making future lists on how hard to make these. I also decided to throw a bonus in there because, well, I didn't think it officially belonged on the list, but love it just the same. So make sure you check that out. All right, let's get into it. Coming in at number five, the viscous fluids, residual goop, and living slime you might be just deleting. Well, if you are, you're literally deleting nanites. They may not seem like much, but as you refine them, these eventually turn into nanites. So the next time you see residual goop, this will refine into viscous fluids which then refines into living slime, which then <laughs> refines into runaway mold, which then, you guessed it, refines into nanites. This may seem like a lot of work, but keep in mind that you can purchase residual goop at some trade terminals and NPC pilots, so in effect, you can buy nanites with a little elbow grease at the refiner. Just remember that it takes five goop for every eventual nanite you'll want to refine. Number four, if you're in search of a specific raw material, just go into your catalog and select it. If that material is present in the current system you're in, then you'll get further instructions on either where to find it or how to refine it. If it's not in your current system, then go to your galaxy map and you'll see that the elements icon appears next to the system that it's in. As you might imagine, this comes in pretty handy if you're looking for something specific. Unfortunately, this only works for certain raw materials, so if you click on it and see a message that says locate substance, you're in luck. Number three, if you're still looking to complete your planetary zoology achievement for scanning all of the fauna on 48 different planets, well, look for stabilized reality glitch planets and scan the first creature you see. So to clarify, stabilized reality glitches are like these cable pods here. The great thing about these unique planets is that they only have one fauna, so scanning the first one you see will not only give you the milestone for scanning all of the fauna on that planet, when you go into your Discoveries tab, you can upload it for a nice little 50 nanite payout. If you want some planet addresses to find some, check out this video I did on trophy hunting where I go through every single reality glitch and give you a few pointers on how to easily spot them. Number two. If you're caught in a nasty storm and you need to save your hazard protection, just enter camera mode. Your damage actually stops, but the game timer on the storm continues. Take note of where my protection is right now before I enter camera mode. As you can see, after coming out of it, it was right where I left it and the storm already passed. It's a great way to ride out the storm while preserving your resources. And you know what? You might even get some cool shots in the process. All right, guys. Yep, it's time. Number one. If you're looking for an easier way to build on your freighter, you can get a bird's eye view by forcing your build camera outside the freighter. Confused? Well, let me shed a little light. We're here on board the Nebuchadnezzar, and I admit, it's looking pretty basic. I decided to tear everything out and start from scratch and experiment with some freighter build techniques. If you're looking to do the same, then I would highly recommend checking out Action Pants Gaming. The guy is a master when it comes to freighter builds. There's a link in the description to his channel, so make sure and check him out. So, to get the camera mode outside, just go into your camera build mode by clicking on the left thumbstick. As you can see, this lets you move around while your character stays put. Now you just need to move the camera into an area of the freighter that can be deleted. Make sure you're not actually standing in the part you're deleting. 
Now after you delete it, you can see that the build camera is now outside and you can still move around to examine your layout. From here, you can add any corridors or rooms you normally would, but you'll find it's a whole lot easier when you can see things from further back. All right, so if you were four for four going into the final tip, did I wreck your perfect score there? If you managed to know at least one, then hey, congrats, you now have some newfound knowledge to put to good use. And yes, you've officially earned your C-Class badge. Getting two or three will put you in the B-Class, while four earns you an A-Class. And of course, if you knew all five, then congrats. And I apologize for not being able to show you anything new. You, my friend, are an S-Class traveler. But as I mentioned earlier, I had a bonus tip that I find myself using a ton when base building, so I hope you enjoyed as much as I do. If you want to build a curve and add a little flair to your base, then you'll love this technique that I learned from, well, someone I consider a master No Man's Sky builder, Beeblebum. Make sure and check out his channel if you enjoy building. Chances are you've probably already found him, but if not, there's a link in the description. So if you have some floor tiles down and want to curve them, first stand facing the end of where you'll be adding your tiles. If you want to curve to the left, then you'll start on the left edge. Likewise, you'll start on the right if you want to curve your floor to the right. From here, we're going to use what's known in the building community as the Facta Curve, named after the original builder, Atch Facta, who is an incredible No Man's Sky builder in their own right. And of course, there's a link to his channel in the description. So to incorporate the Facta Curve into our curved flooring, we'll only be needing one glitch building technique, the Adjacency Glitch. If you're unsure what I'm talking about, you definitely need to check out my video on glitch building techniques where I take you through all the various methods and how to successfully implement them into your builds. So for this quick tutorial, I'm gonna curve the floor to the left side. Now we're gonna go into our adornments menu and have a paver ready. Now, if we had a cylinder that could be perfectly centered and snapped to place, we would use the cylinder, but cylinders don't work that way, but pavers do. So that's why we start with the paver and then adjacency to the cylinder, leaving it perfectly centered. And in a perfect world, a cube would be able to be snapped into place right on top of the cylinder. But it doesn't quite work that way, so what we do is start with another cylinder and adjacency to a cube. Now that that cube's in place, we'll snap one more cube on the inside and then delete that other cube and the cylinder, leaving just the one cube hovering above our current floor. Next up, we're gonna snap a pyramid on the outside of this cube. It's important to make sure that the base of the pyramid is what's coming in contact with the cube so the point is facing to the left as we look at it here. And now we're gonna attach one more pyramid on the side of our first pyramid with the base facing outward. And now we're gonna attach a cube to this new pyramid. So moving forward, we're gonna follow the exact same pattern, only we're gonna add one more pyramid to the mix. So here, as you can see, we're going to be adding a pyramid with the point out, and then we're going to be connecting not one, but two more pyramids. And this will be the process that we repeat. It's only a little bit different at the beginning. And of course you can go as far as you like, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do a few to show you the basic technique. I know what a lot of you are thinking probably. What does this weird structure have to do with curving a floor? Well, to understand that is to know that we're only gonna be building on a few of these pyramids. The rest is just merely scaffolding, just support. So to make it easier, I'm gonna color all the pyramids we're gonna be building on yellow so you can keep track of the curve. Now I'm sure you can probably see it already. 
So literally, everything that's not a yellow pyramid at this point, you could delete. But we'll just leave the supporting structure so you can get a better idea of the build. So to boil it down simply, our main goal is to get pavers in a certain position to where we can just snap floors on to the side of those pavers to get our curve. And as you can see, we're gonna add a cube to the base of every yellow pyramid. And like before, because we can't place a centered and snapped cylinder underneath each cube, we're gonna have to go a different direction. So on top of each cube, we're gonna put a pipe. Now you might be wondering, well, why a pipe? Well, keep in mind, our end goal is to get a paver in position. So we have to find a way to incorporate pavers here. So we can't go from pipe to paver, but we can go from cylinder to paver. So now that we have our pipes in place, we can delete the cube and replace the cube with a cylinder. And now underneath each cylinder, we can adjacency glitch from a cylinder to a paver. If you're not used to glitch building, I know this sounds super complicated, but trust me, once you get the hang of it, you'll be doing this in no time, I promise. So the thing that can be a little odd with going from cylinder to paver when you're doing the adjacency glitch is that sometimes the paver will snap like this accidentally underneath the cylinder. This is not what we're after. So when you place a cylinder against another one, you typically have kind of a default orientation of the cylinder. And that determines when you adjacency to a paver how that paver behaves. So if the cylinder is not flipped correctly, the paver is going to end up like this uh, up against the other cylinder, which is not what we're after like before. So we're going to make the cylinder flip by moving the cursor up and down. If you look carefully, you'll actually see it flip. Now when we do our adjacency glitch, the paver is in the correct position. So the one on the right is what we're after. So if you get something like the one on the left, just make sure to flip the cylinder. All right, so now that we understand how to get the paver in position, we just need to add one more paver to the inside of the curve and then delete the previous paver. These new pavers are where we're gonna snap our floor onto. The best thing is we don't have any more glitching to do. So literally, it's just selecting your floor and making sure it snaps onto the paver and not on the previous floor. So now that we have all these snapped in place, you can see we have a beautifully curved floor and everything else can just get deleted. So there we go, one awesome curved floor. If you're still watching at this point, you probably didn't mind the build tutorial. So thanks for sticking around and let me know if you have any questions down below. And if you like this video, like the video. This is Taylor with Whiskey Barrel Gaming. I'm signing off.